Today, we will make a short journey of about two hours by train and metro to reach the Kempton Park in southeast London and take advantage of one of the rare opening occasions of the Kempton Steam Museum. An important testimony of the revolution. 20th century technology for supplying drinking water to London using steam. To see the pump in operation the museum only opens a couple of days a month, but four. To access it is necessary to make an online reservation and payment of the ticket well in advance. This building houses two steam pumps built in 1928 that pumped every up to 60 million litres of clean water per day to the southwest part of the city until 1980, after which they were replaced by electric pumps. For northeast London in the same period, there were five other pumps as. Today, we will have the privilege of seeing one of the two pumps in operation, To the work of the volunteers who constantly take care of its maintenance. This is the largest functioning triple expansion steam engine in the world. Designed with a three-cylinder system, each of which operates at different pressures for lift water using steam and looks a lot like the Titanic's engines. Boilers like this have now been replaced. The coal-fired ones used for the production of steam are now decommissioned. One of the two pumps is named after the engineer Sir William Prescott, British who distinguished himself for his commitment in the water field while the other pump now used only for display and spares bears the name of his wife Bessie. The Institute of Mechanical Engineering recognized these engines as important British industrial heritage. These cast iron built engines really are huge, but the stairs with walkways allow you to see every single mechanical part up close. The oil flows down the tube from these holes and lubricates all the various points. Under the piston are the pumps those there are the tubes that pump the water out the water the pipe that the water enters and under the pipe and the water is pushed out we can also see it from here in this one that opens it and you can see the valves inside the pumps.
This is then moved forward touch. That rack there and the large flywheel will begins to turn. Here it is, this is the signal, it has started now. Each operator is on his own floor checks. You can see clearly how they work alternately. This rod that comes down from above and comes down here is a counter. Here we are below and you can see how they pump under the pistons. This little one is a pump. Auxiliary the first below are the other three large primary ones. Water supply since the early 1900s. Drinking in London was of great importance and these machines have contributed significantly to the development of the city that we can admire today. The day is not over yet, the visit to the museum is over, we get back on the train and the tube back to the city but the transport network in London offers another amazing opportunity to cross the Thames from above with the cable car. A 2012 cable car costing £6 you can go up one of the 
36 cabins on Greenwich Peninsula and in about 10 minutes get to Royal Docks. Each cabin can carry 10 passengers who can enjoy a beautiful view about the city but also see the famous O2 arena used for major sporting events and calls all the De Crystal built in 2012 is the most eco-sustainable building in London, which since 2021 hosts the Greater London City Hall with its mayor. Today we have moved on from the 20th century with important water machines, drinking to this 21st century green building, and once again, we are surprised by the speed of renewal of this city.